The Coma Recut is a 2017 remaster of The Coma Cutting Class, which was originally developed and published by Dev Espresso Games in 2015. In this side-scrolling graphic novel-esque Korean horror game, you play as, and apologies for potentially butchering this, Young Ho, a Nerdosaurus Rex who's found himself trapped in his school Sewa High that has shockingly become a twisted reflection of his waking world, and the only way out seems to be to change his failing grades and change his destiny. You'll quickly find that that's going to be easier said than done, especially given the fact that the twisted reflection of his heartthrob of a homeroom teacher, Miss Song, is practically dying to get Young Ho better acquainted with the business end of her box cutter. I gotta say though, even with bedraggled locks and... Wait, are those fangs? Hmm. Oddly enough, that's still working for me. All looting aside, I've always enjoyed a good school horror experience, so if you're into that too, the coma shouldn't disappoint. The gameplay is pretty straightforward, if a little clunky in execution. Your goal is to make it from one part of the school to various others in order to secure your exit and GTFO. Along the way, you'll have to rely on the help of, the butchering continues, Yai Sol, a mysterious girl who doesn't even go here, though she seems to know an awful lot about what's happening to Young Ho and his school. But as mentioned earlier, you also have a bloodthirsty yet still bodacious babe breathing down your neck so you'll have to move stealthily and make note of hidey holes along the way. Now hiding isn't the only arrow in your quiver. By exploring the school and looting other students' belongings, different reality so stealing's okay, right? You'll be able to find various healing items that will replenish health, refuel your stamina gauge, and heal various deleterious conditions like bleeding or poison. You can also dodge roll to avoid Miss Song's numerous attempts to divest you of your precious appendages, though getting the timing right can be a bit tricky. And if all else fails, just leg it, but keep in mind you're a big old nerd, so distance running really isn't your forte. Again, all of this works fairly well in terms of playing up the tension and making you feel like your life and limb are constantly in jeopardy, with the glaring exception of one mechanic, crouching and holding your breath, the purpose of which is to hide in the shadows and potentially evade detection. So there's certainly a purpose for this action, but the game gives you no reason to even remember that this is a thing you can do. I literally forgot about this mechanic and managed to muddle my way through the entire game just fine without it. That's kind of an issue because it's virtually unnecessary compared to some of the other more effective actions you can take. Aside from that criticism and the overall awkward execution, I really enjoyed this game. In this approximately 3 hour experience, you enter a twisted version of Young Ho's world and have to guide him safely through it while uncovering why this has happened and how to reverse it. Along the way, you'll have a dearth of documents to sift through, such as notes and school memos. These tidbits of context help make this such an immersive experience, and their presence, along with the various recovery items and cha-ching, cash money, baby, make exploration of the game's world incredibly rewarding. You will quickly discover that Young Ho isn't the only one with problems at school. The team does an excellent job creating an entire world with characters who all have relatable, fleshed-out stakes. Again, I've harped on this before, but this is absolutely essential for a successful horror game. Yes, you've got to have a scary concept augmented by the spoopiest of atmospheres, but you also need strong characters with relatable, negative emotions to fill the space and contribute to why things done got fucked up in the first place. Part of the reason excellent horror games work so well is because we come to care about the characters and would really prefer to see them not meet horrible ends. This is true here in the presence of notes that both play up the intrigue of the overarching narrative and provide windows into the various characters' psyches that are just as twisted as the hellscape in which Young Ho finds himself greatly contribute to the excellence of the horror experience. But the notes actually lead me to my second main criticism. I was drawn into this world and wanted to know everything about the distorted reality as well as the characters whose words literally line the halls of this uncanny school building. That being said, I felt the game in some ways worked against my peaked interest because pulling up a text box doesn't actually cause the game to pause. So there were quite a few times where I was enjoying a good read and getting into the story, only to be rudely interrupted by our pointy object-wielding assailant. Now, this is certainly more realistic. The fact that someone with murderous intent is actively pursuing you isn't very conducive to cozying up with a makeshift compendium of Sewa High's latest hot goss and having a leisurely salacious read. Fine. But honestly, I would have preferred a little less realism here because I ended up just feeling punished for wanting to get more invested in the story. And I think I'll take the opportunity to zoom out here. This is just my advice to horror game devs. Take it or leave it. 
But if you find yourself in a situation where you have to choose between realism and the story, choose the story. Every single time. That's just my two cents anyway. And while I think the story is probably the strongest part about this game, the soundscape is a very close second. From the anxiety-inducing chase music to the discordantly out-of-place elevator-like cafeteria music, everything works so well to keep the tension high and our spirits low. I do have one final criticism to mention, and this isn't so much about the game per se, it's more about the presentation. At least in the Switch version of the game, the devs make no mention about the presence of themes of suicide slash suicidality within the game itself. While it's only briefly alluded to, I feel strongly that there should have been a screen when loading up the game devoted to warning players about this. If such themes are also present in the sequel, I hope that the devs handled this better, but that's all I'll say about that. Though as mentioned earlier, a single playthrough will take approximately 3 hours, you will need multiple playthroughs in order to get all the endings. So there's a fair amount of replay value, and despite all better judgment, I kinda do feel like spending another night with Miss Song.